welcome to uh, Digital Yachts training webinar for the NMEA Virtual Training Week. Hi, I'm Paul Sumner, the CTO of Digital Yacht. Digital Yacht are a UK based company uh, manufacturing AIS, uh, interfacing products and more recently a lot of NMEA 2000 gateways. Today I'm going to be talking about our new product, the Nav Doctor. NMEA 2000 did take a little while to establish itself, but it's now ubiquitous on all types of pleasure craft. And uh, with its success, it also means that you have more and more manufacturers and more and more products using NMEA 2000. And in these situations, interoperability problems can exist. And also, the more components and the more products using it, the more interfacing and installation issues you can have. While Digital Yacht has been developing our own products, we saw an opportunity for a simple and easy to use diagnostics tool that would help anyone involved in installing or using NMEA 2000 networks on a boat. And that's how NavDoctor was born. So here he is, NavDoctor. Um, I'm going to open the box and as you'll see it's a very straightforward um, device. It's based on our Navlink 2 uh, wireless NMEA 2000 gateway which we launched last year. Um, it uses the same enclosure, has the same integrated NMEA 2000 drop cable with a standard uh, male connector on the end. Um, you can easily just find in your NMEA 2000 network a spare uh, T-piece and then just connect that up to it. It takes its power from the NMEA 2000 network um, and it will provide the data, take all the data from the network um, which it then uses to analyse and diagnose problems. Basically um, inside NavDoctor is a, a wireless adapter that creates a wireless network. So when you get down on the boat, you plug it in, up comes the wireless network, you connect to it with your mobile device and then all of the uh, reading of the data and, and, and interacting with NavDoctor is done through your web browser. So you don't need any special apps or uh, any computers with you. You just take whatever phone or tablet you have with you already and just connect that up wirelessly to, to NavDoctor. So here are the uh, five LEDs on the NavDoctor. Uh, they all flash when you first plug it into the NMEA 2000 network and then what you should have is a flashing status LED um, which will stay flashing until you wirelessly connect a, a device to it and then it will go to a solid green uh, light. You've got the data in yellow LED which will be flashing away if there's NMEA 2000 data on the network. You've got the middle LED which is red error LED which hopefully you'll never see uh, but that would indicate a problem with the unit. Um, you've got the uh, data out and the link LEDs which if you're using the TCP or UDP connections will, will uh, come on and the link will go solid if it's a TCP connection established. So now we're going to uh, dig into the web interface of the NavDoctor um, and in order to do that first thing we need to do is connect a wireless device to the NavDoctor wireless network. I'm going to use a Mac for the purposes of this video, um, so I'm just going to do a scan. Uh, there it is, NavDoctor. I'm going to select that, and it pops up straight away with the uh, asking for the password. Now I'm just going to put that show password. So password on all the devices is P A S S in capitals and a hyphen, and then the last four digits of the specific uh, network name that that device has. So in this case that's E0A0 and that's actually the last four digits of the MAC address of the, the wireless adapter inside the NavDoctor. So put that in as long as those last four digits match the, uh, the last four digits of the uh, wireless network name then that will join, be correct. And after few seconds you should get the tick coming up so yeah that's all connected so now we should be able to go to the uh, home page now to get to the home page you just go http colon forward slash forward slash and then it's navdoctor as you can see it's coming up there in my browser history but there you go navdoctor.local and uh, that should now bring up the uh, web interface 
here it comes, and there it is. So it's a, you know, we tried to make this a very modern, simple uh, interface. Um, you've got um, the six different pages of information that you can bring up. Um, you can also, if you're, say, for instance, you were looking at devices and you want to go straight to the PGN list, you can do that from this quick menu option here, which is a repeat of all the buttons here, but it just means that you can, from any page, you can go to any other page without having to go back through the, the home page. So that's the what you first see when you load up the uh, NavDoctor web interface. So let's have a look at uh, the first uh, option, which is devices. And this will actually give us a list of the devices on the, the network. Uh, so you get this table, nice simple table, showing you the, uh, the address of the device, um, the manufacturer's name, the CAN name, that's that 64-bit unique uh, CAN name that every device has. Um, it's, if you like, it's that, like the unique serial number of that device. Um, and that includes information like the uh, class and function code, the manufacturer code, and the unique serial number of the device. Um, then you've got the device instance. In this case, all the devices on the network today have got a device instance of zero. But if you had multiple GPS sources, for instance, they might have different device instances. Um, or if you had multiple engine gateways, then they would also have different device instances. Uh, then you've got the class and function codes. Uh, and we, what we've done here is put the, the description in there uh, so that that comes up and you can see what the what type of device it is that you're looking at. So that's the, the basic table of devices. Um, and that if a new device uh, is plugged into the network, after a couple of seconds it should appear in here and you just need to click the, the refresh button down the bottom to uh, add that to that new device that's been connected to the network. Um, if you want to know more about a particular device, oh, I should just, before we dig into that, I'll just mention the address of the, uh, so the Nav Doctor, which is this device here, uh, it has a class system tool and its function class is, is the diagnostics device. Um, so the Nav Doctor, to minimize disruption of the NMEA 2000 network and not cause all the devices uh, to try and get an address claim. It, it claims address 250, which is right at the top of the address range. It's one of the lowest priority addresses um, because the lower the address number, uh, the higher priority that device has in, on the network. So we automatically take uh, address 250 um, so as to, to disrupt the network in the least possible manner. Um, so. Returning back to the original subject, which was how to get more information about a particular device. So if we wanted to know, for instance, this Garmin unit here, I just move along to the end of the line and there's a little eye icon. And when I click that, what happens is NavDoctor now queries that Garmin unit and asks for its product information and its configuration information. And then it displays it in this pop-up window here. So you've got all of the information available on that particular unit, database version, it supports the product code, its, its model name, uh, software versions, um, well everything there that, uh, that you could want to know about it. And down the bottom is the load equivalency, the LEN number, so that's important when you're trying to calculate how much uh, current is being consumed by the devices on the NMEA 2000 network. And in this case, because it's, it's got its own separate power supply, it's not taking any power from the uh, from the network, then you can click on config info, and in here, if if the configuration info has been set up by whoever installed it, then this would appear. But this looks like it's just got the default uh, information there. Um, so that's the information available on each device, and you just literally just come down the list. If you want to know a bit more about the Lawrence unit, just click on the eye icon, <coughs> and up comes that information there. So let's close that. Um, so that's the, the device list. You can actually sort by address or by manufacturer uh, just by clicking on the, the column header at the top there. Okay, so that's the first page. Um, let's have a look now at the, um, the PGNs and I'm going to use the quick 
menu option, so I can just go straight to the PGNs page without having to go back through the, the home page. If you did want to go to the home page, you can just click the home icon over here, and that takes you back. But uh, let's have a look at the PGNs. So again, similar table to the we had for the devices. It lists all the, the PGNs that it uh, is reading from the network. Um, and this list will just get longer and longer as more PGNs are detected. Um, you've got the PGN number, you've got the source address, so the device uh, that is sending that particular PGN. So if we wanted to quickly, uh, what we could do there is quickly put it back to the devices list and then look at number five, and that's the Garmin, and it's the Garmin uh, MFD that we're looking at. So we can then go back to the PGNs, and we know that all of these ones from source address five are coming from the uh, Garmin MFD, and we can sort, uh, by, sort the list by source address, um, so we can group them so that we know that all of these PGNs here are coming from the, the MFD. The um, the other the next column is destination address. So in most cases, you'll see this is two five five, which means that's the um, the number that's used to tell a, that a PGN is for global addressing. So that that goes that PGN goes to all devices on the network. If it's an addressed PGN, so a uh, PGN that's only going to go to one device, as we've got here, um, this is uh, an addressed. ISO request that's being made directly to uh, 250, which if you remember is, is the nav doctor. So the Garmin has been uh, sending an ISO request to, to the nav doctor there. Uh, you've got the uh, description of the PGN um, and then also a, a, a time a timestamp, if you like, of, of when that PGN came in. You can see them regularly changing there. We can click on the time. Um, to sort them by the time that they came in. If we want to know more about um, a particular PGN, then we've got this info icon. And you just click on that, and then it will give you um, information about the PGN. I've, I've picked an ISO request, which is not particularly interesting. Let's pick one with a bit more information in it. So we've got a wind data PGN there, so I'm going to click on that. And here we've got the, uh, the wind speed in meters per second. Uh, we've got the wind direction in radians um, and the wind reference. So you, you, you get all the, the different fields that are uh, transmitted in that PGN displayed um, there. And if we take another one, for instance, let's go to navigation data. And there you've got a, bit more, a lot more information there. You've got distance to destination, waypoint, course and bearing. Uh, Bearing to original, I mean, a lot of this is, I've not actually set up a, a waypoint on the MFD, so a lot of these fields have, have got no data in them. But it gives you an idea of the sort of information that you can see by drilling down into a particular PGN. So that's the, um, the PGN list, and you can clear that, which basically refreshes it, makes it go out and get all new data for each of the, the PGNs. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Uh, so we've looked at devices, we've looked at PGNs. Uh, the next um, page that we've got is one called View Data. So the View Data page is actually the raw NMEA 2000 um, data that Nav Doctor is detecting. So most of the time, I mean, this is pretty meaningless. You wouldn't be able to read that. Um, it's just a series of hex um, values at the end of each of the line. But it's, it's basically, this is the data that NavDoctor is using to, to fill in the um, information on that PGN page. Um, what this page is useful for, though, is if we come down the bottom, is that you can start a log. If I start the log now, um, it will now record all of that data. And that means that if you've got a particularly knotty, um, difficult NMEA 2000 um, network problem uh, and you want to record the data and perhaps send that to, to, to us for, for further analysis to try and work out what's going on, then that's what this, this log is for. And when I stop the log, I can leave that running for minutes or even hours. Um, when I stop that, I can then save that log um, and it will save the log file. It saves it as a text file. So 
very straightforward. And then you can email that text file to us. Uh, if I open that, that just will show us what's in there. So as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's exactly the same as the data that you're seeing in the page, um, just stored in a text file so that we can play that back on our uh, equipment in the, in the lab. Okay, so that's logging. Um, pretty straightforward, but it does also gives you a, a visual indication that there's lots of data coming through. Um, so let's go up the top of the page and go back to the home page. Right, so let's uh, so we've done the top three um, pages. Let's go to have a look at the health page. So this, what we wanted to do with the health page was give you a very simple, straightforward display of what is happening on the on the network. You know, there are I think the Metron um, uh, NMEA two thousand meter is is a is a great device, and that will give you a lot more um, voltage readings. But we've taken the the key ones, which are the supply voltage. Um, here um, and also the dominant and recessive voltages which are the differential voltages on the pulses that are going out on the CAN high and low lines. Um, these are the ones that really are critical to the correct operation of the, um, of the network. So um, if you want to know more about a particular value um, you can click on the little question mark icon at the end and it then tells you what the value should be. So the supply voltage should be between 9 and 16 volts. Um, well, it's there at, uh, and I'm actually just going to uh, quickly change the voltage on our unit here. So if I just tweak the voltage, you'll see that start to reduce. I'm getting the warning alarm from the Garmin, low voltage alarm. Um, and you can see that the, uh, you know, let me just bring that back up again. So you can actually hear what I'm saying. So you actually saw it sort of change colour, so it goes to yellow as it starts getting close to the lower limit and it will actually go to red um, once it gets down below 9 volts or above 16 volts. So that's the supply voltage gauge. You've got um, a bus load uh, gauge here, so this is like a percentage of the um, of the bandwidth of the, the CAN bus which is being utilised at the moment. So as you add more and more devices, you have more and more PGNs being transmitted, you'll see that this percentage here will increase um, as, as more and more PGNs are, are being transmitted on the network. Next, right, so the next is the dominant voltage. So this is the peak differential voltage that you should have between the CAN high and low pulses. And typically this should be um, if you click on here, between 1.45 and 2.75 volts. Um, normally you find it around, yeah, around about this, 2.1, 2.2 volts. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove one of the terminators um, and you'll see that that value will go up by 0.2 of a volt. So that's gone up now to 2.44 volts. That was just me removing the terminator. Um, I'm just going to put the terminator back on and that will go back down to 2.1. If I add an extra, so now we've got three terminators, you'll see that that will drop down and actually it will go to a, to a yellow display just to show you that's a warning that it's getting uh, lower um, towards the lower limit. So that's a good indication of, of you know, when you've got bad termination, uh, either you've got not enough terminations or, or you've got too many. But that's basically the, the dominant and recessive voltage readings and the recessive voltage should be very low. I mean, it's normally between 0.01, minus 0.01 and 0.12 volts. I'm going to just remove that uh, extra terminator that I put on there. So now let's go back to having two properly fitted terminators. And that should now go back up to 2.1, 2.2. So that's the uh, dominant voltage indications of, of bad termination. So let's come down now to the error frame section of the health page. Um, very important section because here it shows all the CAN errors that are occurring on the, on the network. Uh, now CAN errors can be caused by um, any um, cabling issues. Um, very often if they've got an uh, open circuit or a short circuit on any of the wiring, in the NMEA 2000 network then the first thing you see is, is error frames 
occurring. Um, and it could be that you've got a fracture uh, in, in one of the T-pieces, what some of the plastic T-pieces pieces have been known to fail. And if and sometimes you might have to get in amongst it and start to, to pull and, and twist cables. Um, the good thing is that Nav Doctor will detect those uh, frame errors as and when they occur. And I'm going to try and recreate that um, for this video by just removing the uh, both the terminators. So I've got one terminator removed at the moment. Let's just unplug the other one just temporarily. And oh, yeah, there we go. You see the error count has uh, shot up. Um, and uh, the error frame rate went up as 93, uh, was it 93? Yeah. So that's the, uh, the frame rate and the error counts. Now, what I can do now is uh, they've stabilized, so I can refresh that. So if you, you know, fiddle with the, the cabling um, and put it back, you can then refresh, it will zero the counts, and then you can go and move the connector again, or the cable that you think has got a problem, and as soon as you start to uh, disconnect, that should again cause the errors and you can then be sure that that is the, the problem uh, component in the system. If it's a really bad fault, um, so for instance a dead short across the can that's just stopping any data, which I'm just going to recreate here now, um, it will go to bus off state. So let's do that now. There you go, bus state 7, and there you've got and it's actually what's happened now is NavDoctor has disconnected itself from the network because there is a, a, a major problem. Um, what you'd have to do is go in, fiddle with the cabling, make sure everything uh, is okay, and then you can reset and it will then, NavDoctor will try and go back onto the network and uh, it will come back to the home page. So we go back to health and then you'll see that the uh, zeros frame rate now so hopefully what you've done is fixed it um, and you can then go do some more tests um, and like I say if if Navdoc detects any error frames it will be stored on this in this uh, window so a really useful uh, function there um, now let's go back to the home page again so we're getting towards the end of the the options uh, let's talk quickly about report so you've done your installation um, everything's working, you're happy, um, and you want to just create a, a permanent record that you can keep in your own files, but also maybe give a copy to the customer so that they know that everything's fine. Then the network test report is just the, the function for that. So it gives you a, a summary of the devices on the network. It gives you um, uh, the summary of the health page. So you've got there nice ticks showing you that everything's right. You can then put in the, the boat name and the name, your name of the person as the installer. Um, and then you can print that um, or you can print that to PDF as well on, on a mobile device so that you've got a PDF copy. Um, it's got the date and time of the when the test took place. So a really good simple record of the status of the NMEA 2000 network after you've finished your installation and something that the, will I think be a positive um, thing to give to the customer. So the, the last but not least uh, page is the settings page. So in this page um, you've got the network settings. So I've been doing all of this uh, video with the uh, nav doctor in uh, in what's called access point mode. So that's where it creates its wireless network with an SSID of uh, Nav Doctor and then the four digit code at the end. Um, you can uh, change the password if you want to from the default. Um, so you've got different options here. You can give it a different SSID name, um, but you know, most of the time, I would imagine you, you'll keep the, the default um, SSID and password. Um, but if you want to, and that's that's fine. So if you're if you're on the boat um, and you're going to be using Nav Doctor primarily on the boat for, for um, then access point mode is the best mode to use. However, if you're going to be using Nav Doctor in your workshop, uh, and maybe the workshop's already got a wireless router um, in there, and you want to rather than keep having to change wireless networks, you can actually select station mode, um, and then you can do a scan for for networks. Um, and then it will 
give you a list of all the networks available. So if your um, workshop router appeared in the list, you could select it, you could enter the password for that router, and then you could update settings. And from that moment on, the Nav Doctor, rather than try and create its own access point, it will join your workshop um, uh, wireless router, and then you'll be able to access that just on your normal network. Um, so that's that's quite useful. Um, then down the bottom, you've got information about the product serial number, the firmware version, we're on beta release at the moment. You've also got a free memory count there. Um, and uh, this is the probably the most important bit, the, the firmware update. So, you know, we're going to be adding uh, bug fixes, hopefully not too many, uh, new features, um, just improvements generally as, as NavDoctor evolves and um, we get feedback from people using it. Um, and the goal is you know, to have at least one major uh, release of, of NavDoctor per year, um, probably more initially, um, and we'll be adding you know, functionality and, and, and fixes as, as needed. And that software update can all be done here. So basically, you can, you'll be able to download a, an update file from our um, website, choose the file, and then upload it through this web interface. So very, very easy indeed to, to update. So we're fast approaching the, 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 the end of this practical demonstration of, of NavDoctor. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, straightforward interface to use. So currently we've got uh, four or five beta testers uh, testing the uh, NavDoctor software release. Um, hopefully they'll come back with some interesting feedback which we can either incorporate into the release candidate or uh, put those in as new features to go into future updates. Um, updating of the nav doctor is really easy. Uh, you can do all that through the web interface. Um, we hope that after the beta testing is complete, which should be in the next couple of weeks, uh, we should be shipping at the end of September. Um, and we've also uh, hoping, fingers crossed, that um, everyone likes the nav doctor and it becomes part of the NMEA 2000 uh, training. So nav doctor will retail in the US for $450. Um, and just to run through the features again, it's a completely self-contained uh, diagnostics tool and test tool for NMEA 2000. You've got the built-in wireless interface with the web interface to see all of the data that's on the NMEA 2000 network. You can look at devices, you can look at PGNs, you can run the test report, look at the health of the network. Um, so all in all, it's a, it's a really useful diagnostics and test tool for anyone involved in NMEA 2000. Uh, I hope you found today's video interesting um, and thanks very much for watching.